Armando Trevino. I go by Ramo. I'm going into my master's this fall in public administration. It's my fifth year here at ISU. I love it. Uh, grew up in Seattle for like my first eight, nine years. Grew up in Beacon Hill. Then we moved out more towards like Des Moines, Tuck Willis, Sea Tack, put away, and that's where we've been for the most part. I went to Blanchett for my first two years, private school up in Seattle. It was a great experience coming from public school to private. It's a lot different from like the educational system, like just the things we learned, and now we're learning about different things like God, stuff like that. So it was a hard transition, but I feel like it's helped me out getting to college because it was a college prep school, which was nice. Then just transferred to the school right across the way on 85th, probably like 10 minutes away called Ballard. And that's where I finish off my high school career, you'd say. Uh, have three sisters, one older, two youngers, love them dearly. Uh, growing up, you know, all I really had was football and my family. You know, I didn't know my dad or anything, but luckily I was fortunate enough to have my stepdad who came in around eight or nine really played a major part in my life, you know, just having someone like to look up to who's a male figure other than my grandpa, you know, he could only do so much and it just shaped me to be who I am. Now I'm here. It was, it was ultimate mom's choice. So a funny story. So I was about six or seven. I'm a big kid. I played, I played D-line, you know, like she took me to a boxing gym and, uh, we're sitting there and she's like, look, I want you to do some type of sports. I want you to do boxing. And I'm like, okay. So we go in there the first time and uh, I see people jump roping. They're sitting there going and I'm like, mom, I can't jump rope. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And I just didn't do it. And she's like, all right, it's football. It was, it drained me to be honest. Like that first game against Western State Colorado, like the first half, I it was like my first time really feeling like I had a shot to play and show what I could do, you know. And I go out there and I had like a sack, a couple tackles, like was making some play. So I'm feeling really good about myself. Then in that second quarter, just a tragic accident on the field happened and I tore my MCL and I had to miss the rain, like the remaining of the season. And it was it sucked because that that team in that class was so close and I was super cool with all the seniors and I was a young guy, you know. So like it was it was really hard seeing my, my brothers go out there and play and play their hearts out and I can't even help, you know, I'm on the sideline. It just it put me through it put more toll mentally just because I've been active my whole life. I know I'll be able to get back and all that stuff. But just mentally just trying to get back to where I was was super, super frustrating and like there's times where I'd be like really sad or depressed, you know, like it's like, damn, I can't play the sport I've been playing since I was six, you know, but then it shifted my focus more on school and like life after football. Kenny, it kind of gave me a glimpse of what actual life is other than football, you know, and that's where I shifted my focus on aspects of certain life of like, all right, like football is not the only thing, you know, like I got to find different hobbies, what I like to do and stuff like that which was really, really nice, so. I mean, I was fortunate enough to get my six year back, so I actually have two more years, so that's how I'm getting in my master's program, so public administration. So uh, I actually wanna start like an NGO of some sort since, I mean, I had some rough times growing up. I had a little government housing and all that stuff, and I just remember times where I can even see my family my sisters and my mom, you know, it was just us, an apartment downtown Seattle, you know, couldn't see our grandma or grandparents or none of that. So it's like experiencing that, I want to help kids who go through that same situation because I'm fortunate enough and blessed enough to be in a position where I can get my school paid for from where I was in the beginning of my life, you know, and I know that's for kids all around the world and the nation itself, and especially going on with Peru, Lebanon, with the whole explosion, like I want to do something, get some type of organization that can help like crisis areas just like that to like help families, bring supplies, stuff like that and all that stuff. And that's where it leads me into my public administration. I majored in political science and that's where I got my undergrad in. So it's some, something like that I really, really want to do with people. Growing up, you know, I'm, I'm a mixed kid. I'm black, Samoan, Mexican, so I get everything. You know, I can, I've dealt with racism through all different angles, you know, like 
I'm not the darkest skin person, so you know, I could deal with colorism and stuff like that. So I won't get it as much as my fellow brothers or sisters, you know. But growing up, my grandpa, my grandpa's from the South, straight from the South, Georgia, grew up in the civil rights era. He had a run from lynching, stuff like that. And he's always, always harped on it. Like, you know, we gotta move forward in this country and help our people out, you know? And he's always preached that. And like going into college, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I always played football, so I assumed, all right, let's do sports training or something like that. That went out the way when I went into like bio 1101 or something. Saw all the signs, but I was like, that's not for me. Not for me. So I called my grandpa because me and him were really close. And he's like, well, what about political science? Like I've talked to you about it since you're a kid, all that stuff. Like we always have conversations about politics 24 seven. I'll just go over his house hours at a time, two, three hours, maybe even longer, just talk, you know? And he just really harped on me. Like we got to move forward in this country and help my brothers and sisters. So that's when I knew I was like, <coughs> That's something I'd like to do. And that's where I went, decided to go into political science and go from there. And just growing up, you know, I've had to deal with cops for me and my friends over for a, like false accusation, you know, like that shouldn't happen at all, you know, but it, it does. That's just the reality of this country, you know? So uh, it's just, it's just my main focus, you know, like this, this problem's been going on since the beginning of times, like what's gonna change, you know? And I feel like I have an opportunity to go and make a change in this world. So it really started for my grandpa. And when we did that march, I was just fortunate enough to have Garrett Crane, Tom Toya and Dax and Carr call me up because they know I'm really passionate about it. And that's how we got that march together. Then down the line, I have a relationship with Chief Shy. Shout out Chief Shy. Uh, helped us out, get all the cops involved and everything. And it just, it just got the ball rolling. And after that, the rest is history. And it turned out, you know, like, just to see a movement out here in Pocatello, Idaho, rural area like this, it, it shows something like change can happen. It's just, you gotta have the right people in order to do it. And that's why I try to challenge out other fellow athletes, you know, like you have the platform in these areas, people look up to you. It's just a matter of if you're gonna use your platform you know, and we use it in the right way. And that's the results we got, so. My mom by far the biggest inspiration ever in my life it's it's not close you know like she had my sister when she was 16 me when I was like 17 18 my other sister when she was about 20 21 so having three kids at that age and just seeing her growth and experiences her telling her experiences of what she did and what we shouldn't do in order to go and be successful and not follow her footsteps. It's, it's unreal, you know, like, I remember living in a motel at a time, you know, just struggling. You don't, you don't know what's going on. You're little, you don't know. You just think, all right, everything's fun and dandy, you know, but just looking back at those experiences, she's came such a long way and it's, it's better than what I ever feel like I could do, you know, uh, so she's a warrior. She's a warrior and she's just always preached, just do the right things, work hard and things will come your way, you know, like it's just going to come. And she, her and my stepdad, he, I call him my dad, like that, that's, he's my guy. So they bought their first house about three years ago, you know, have, they had a kid of their own, my little sister Tatum. Um, she's the craziest girl ever, but love that girl to death, love that girl to death. So she's came a long way and I'm, I'm super, super proud of her. I mean, I'm the first person in my family graduating. Let alone now I'm getting my master's. Like, you don't you don't see that a lot, you know? So like, it's, it's really, really dope, really awesome. It's just a testimony of my hard work and my mom just raising her son the right way, you know? And all that stuff, even though everything that's went on, you know, it, it can work. You just gotta believe in your parents, you know, that's what they're for. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna want to put you in the best situations as possible. And, she was she did that you know so i mean my family's all ecstatic you know first person to graduate now i'm getting my master's so like they're really they're really banking on me right now you know but i'm pretty confident that everything will end up being good so it's it's weird like i still feel like i'm the young kid but like i'm 22 now like i came when i was 18 like that's that's wild you know time flies but just like working out with them, 
just showing me how to get certain things done, like let's say getting a house, getting your bills and your name, stuff like that. You know, your parents are, right, you just kind of figure it out. And, you know, you just have your brothers on the team helping you, you know? So like, it just, it just, they just showed me the ropes and now where I'm in their position, it's like, all right, I'm the older guy. People know I'm the older guy. So like, I gotta do things a certain way, you know? Like when you're younger, you can kind of get away with it, but it's like, nah, it shouldn't be like that. But like, you know, just, just setting that standard for our team, for let's say the people in the D-line, just overall the team, like, all right, like we gotta come here and work, get our work done, show up on time, do all the right things, don't get in trouble, get your grades done, stuff like that, you know? It only makes the team better and it will set that standard for the young guys right now who just come in, so. It's, that's what it's all about. That's what's setting like setting a culture, making a culture here. You know.